No Rock in Barbados uh, wants to talk about God and morality. Welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, um, Matt and um, Seth, how are you guys doing? Hey, doing well. It says here you, you want to talk know. about what God says uh, with regard yeah. to morality. Um, how ca how can Seth and I know what God says about morality? I mean, we can't obviously we can't just take your word for it. No, um, let me start. Let me start here first. Um, let me put my, what I believe out there. I, I believe that in the Christian God, I believe that Jesus is the, was the manifestation of God in the flesh, and the laws that He wrote. He wrote for man to, to live by. I just put in that with this, you would know what he what he Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned though, Narak, because I'm not aware that Jesus wrote anything. How do you, how do you know that Jesus wrote something? Um, because he said that he was before Abraham. No, but that's not no 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 no. In no, the context no, of the no, Bible. No no no, Narak. I asked how you knew that Jesus yeah. wrote anything. You you said that Jesus wrote the laws, and you no, now I'm asking I'm how do you know there. that Jesus? I'm there. I, I, I'm no no no. I'm asking how do, how do you know that Jesus wrote something? That's it. Oh, 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 how I know that he had a pen in his hand writing on a piece of paper. That's what you mean. That's what it means <laughs> to write something. If you if you're speaking about if we're speaking about um, scripture, if you read um, First Peter one eleven, it says it was the Spirit of Christ testifying of his suffering in the prophets. So when the prophets wrote, as it said in First Timothy one two sixteen, that everything was inspired Iraq. by God. He was Iraq. basically saying. No, I'm just saying that that is what I believe. That is what I believe that Christ. And I'm, wrote. I know, I know what you believe, Narak. Narak, stop talking. I know what you believe. I'm asking why. Can you tell mm -hmm. me why you believe Jesus wrote something? Oh, because he he said that. How do you know that he Simple said it? You don't get to claim. No, 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 Narak, Narak, listen. You can't say that Jesus said he wrote something or that Jesus said something. You have to demonstrate that Jesus wrote the thing. I can show you a piece of paper that says uh, Trump uh, anointed me as the secretary of state, but that doesn't mean that it was actually written by Trump. And I can't just say, look, it says right here, Trump wrote it. Can I say something, no, Matt? This is not what I, I called to speak about. I was just laying out why I, that's what I believe. That, that, that is just it. I'm, I'm sorry that, that well, I'm you. sorry that you don't want to answer this question, but it's kind of important because you're going to be talking about what God said about morality, right? Yes. Now, I, we'll get back to the question I asked at the beginning, which is, how do we know that God said anything about morality? Because we can't just take your word for it. So what evidence is there that God gave us instructions about morality? I believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. There is. I know you believe uh, that. Uh, I'm asking why. No, no, please, please, please stop telling us what you believe and answer the question about why. Because I, I don't know how to answer it besides saying that's just what I believe. I, I, I read the word of God. I tried you, it. How do you know it's I the word it. of God? You say, you just said again, you read the word of God. How do you know it was the word of God? Because Matt, this is going to go down the line of experiences that I know you don't want to hear. No, and it's not about experiences. You don't want to hear. Iraq, why won't you answer the question that's asked? You've told us what you believe. Now we're asking why. We do this every week. Tell us what you believe and why. What you believe and why. Because You've told us what you believe. I'm asking why. I'm asking why. Narak, are you going to let me finish? I'm asking why you believe that you that God has given you instructions of morality. That's it. You could just say you don't know why you believe, in which case we can just move on. I, I honestly said why you believe, but it was not sufficient. So I, I think we should just move on. Why you said that you, said that you believe. You, you, you simply professed a belief. We're asking... How would you demonstrate the reality or the fact behind that belief? Why do you believe it? Because um, I'm going to go on this road, but Matt will not want me to go there. When, when there are experiences that happen in my life that allow me to believe that the God of the Bible has to be real. Okay, so you had a, a personal experience that's unverifiable to the rest of us, that is validated for you, that, 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 that there was that, a little that, Christ. That's what I'm saying. Can, can you let Seth finish his question before you try and answer or avoid answering? 
No, I mean, I just want to make sure that I'm on your page and understanding. What I'm hearing is the personal experience argument, which doesn't help anybody outside of you. And if you tell me that your personal experience is one that Jesus Christ has proven himself in some way internally inside the shell of you, what happens when I run into a devout believer of another religion holding to another God who tells me that they had a personal experience, which validates that for them regarding another God just as much? What do the rest of us do with you, I think is the question. I, I understand the question, but I, I, I honestly don't know any other way to answer it. So you know in a way that is completely not demonstrable or verifiable to anybody else outside of your own mind. I know because of the experiences that I had, which you just said isn't sufficient for you. But I'm not... Why would it be? Look, if I came to you and I said I had an experience with Allah, and Allah verified for me that the Quran is absolutely true and that the stories of Muhammad written about are all absolutely true, et cetera, validating Islam. And the reason it's true is because I had a personal experience and I know it's real. It's validated in my mind and heart to the whole of my being. I believe it. And I was to say that to you, would you convert at that moment to Islam? I would want to know what his experience was. You would want me to demonstrate why I believe what I believe, meaning you would want me to prove my belief or claim, right? Yep. That's exactly what we're asking you to do. Mm. Um, I was raised from young. Um, my father was a pastor, um, so I was raised um, in a Christian background from young. So basically, um, that is what I knew, right? Well, from growing up, but I did not always live that life. I, I buy that. I then, Inherited belief is a thing, uh, right? Your family believed it was your family and culture. You essentially, that was your normal, and you have been raised right. essentially with a belief in belief based on the background of your family and culture, right? Family and geography, the two main determiners for religious belief, right? Here in the United yeah. States, it's Christianity. It's actually, you can divide it by denominations. You want to see Pentecostal, you want to see Baptist, you go to the Deep South. You want to go North, you'll find Lutheran and Catholic. You want to go down to Mexico, mostly Catholic, Eastern religions in China. You want to see Islam. It's the Middle Eastern nations, family and geography. You're telling me that your background informed your faith, but you have have not validated the truth or the facts or the proof of your belief. We're asking, why do you believe it? I believe it because I, I, I do not know what else you're looking for. But We're looking for I your answer. Uh, no, no, no. It, it, Narak, there's not a right answer. We're not looking for a particular answer. We would just like you to answer the question of why you are believed. And moreover, why should anybody else believe based on what you say? I read the word of God. I exactly How do you know that you read the word of God? I'm never, you're, you are never ever going to get to utter the words that you, shut up for a second. You are never ever gonna to get to say, I read the word of God on my show without me saying, how do you know it was the word of God? I read the King James Version Bible. Okay. And what I read from Genesis to Revelation was sufficient for me to believe. Okay. What was what made it sufficient? What standard did you um, use to determine that reading this book was sufficient to prove that what the book says is true? Because everything that I read, well, obviously when you were a child and you read the, the word of God, it seemed like utter, you know, what, what was this? How can I? What kind of guy be the thousand member the job one of an ass? So I hope it's not the word of God until you prove it's the word of God. I'm sorry, was he talking that, that, about the jawbone, the fight with the jawbone of an ass? Where the hell did that come no, from? That's what I'm saying. No, I'm saying that when you are a child and you read these things, it seems like nonsense. That, that's what I was saying. It seems like nonsense to me as an adult, too. I, oh, okay, I, I understand that. But I would, I would believe that you would 
Well, that, but okay, because I'm not a fan of slavery uh, and stuff. But it, that, I think I don't think no one is. Well, the Bible is. Here's the challenge that I have. You are, okay, but, but, I think well, the reason the, the reason you're frustrated the reason you're frustrated is because I think you want to tell us these foundational principles for morality as as rooted in the Christian Bible. But we see that you're using the Bible as the foundation no, on that, which you that, build the not, house. That's not what I was going to do. Okay, please tell me what were you going to do? I, tell me I, what I, I misunderstood. Called to ask questions. I literally called to ask questions about your morality and what you believe. Like, how does your morality fit? And it was just that we basically lay out what mine are. Mine it says are, here, are the ones that where, do you, where do my morals where come Narak, from? Narak, it says here on the call screener, would like to talk about what God says should be moral, and there's nothing objective or subjective about morality, which is incredibly confused because Wait, morality yeah. must either be yeah. objective or subjective. Those are the only options. But, but when, when you say that there has to be subjective or objective, that's saying then that if something is wrong 2,000 years ago, it has to be wrong today. But are you no, 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 no. You don't understand that. So objective or subjective have nothing to do with whether or not it's absolute you are confusing objective morality with moral absolutes. That is not the same thing. But it says here you wanted to talk about what God said about morality. So, and so the question immediately was, how do we? The question immediately was, how do we know what God said about morality? And you keep saying that you read the Word of God, and we wanted to know why. That's how we got here. Hmm. Um. All through the scriptures, there are laws written that man should abide by. Abide by. And I believe that if man follows these laws, that man would, we would flourish. Okay. Because you believe, you believe does not help me. Look, let me ask you this, Narak. Do you believe that I, as a non-believer in your God, am a good person? Do you think I can have morals and goodness? I believe that all the good things that you do are written in Scripture. Are you saying that I have right. shoplifted a moral foundation or moral reasonings from your God? Essentially, I've sort of borrowed from your deity, and that's the reason I'm good? No, I never said that you're good. I said that the good things that you do, whether you want to call it morality or, or, or what's not, it's well, that's interesting. Not, that's, interesting. That's, that's not true. That, that, that is demonstrably not true, Narak, because one good thing that I do is teach people about how slavery is immoral. The Bible does not teach that slavery is immoral. The Bible sanctions slavery. Mm, Matt, can I, can I ask you? I, I, I know you're, you're on this topic of slavery, but I don't like to go down this road, right? But I know a lot of, when you speak about morality, it comes up a lot. If you are a painter, and you paint thousands of pictures. You take 999 of these pictures and you put them in the fire and you burn them. Have you done anything wrong? No. A painter can do whatever he wants with his painting. Correct. People think that God can do whatever he wants. He does not fall. On you, the sir, are absolutely vile and disgusting that you want to sacrifice your entire humanity to the Bill Cosby, mm -hmm. I brought you into this world, I can take you out bullshit. You don't get to say that God can do whatever no, 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 he wants. No, no, no. And Shut up for a minute. You don't get to say that God can do whatever he wants with us because we're his property. Plus, that's not what the Bible says about slavery. The Bible doesn't say anything about God having slaves. The Bible sanctions humans owning other humans as property. You should know what the fuck your book says before you start making excuses for it, sir. Matt, I can guarantee you, I know the scriptures much better than you do. You are reading no, you scripture. fucking don't. No, you fucking Matt, don't. Matt, no, you Matt, fucking Matt. don't because you just Matt. said that God, when I was talking about slavery, that God can do what he wants with his people. But the Bible doesn't say anything about God owning slaves. It talks about humans owning slaves. So you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and we're done with Matt, you. Who, who give you? Goodbye. On that note, I, I'm always a little bit struck by the position that he's God and he owes us no explanation. I think, first of all, it's a get out of morality free card. 
I also think it speaks to a penchant in uh, penchant in high control religions to respond to authoritarian figures. Yeah. Right? He can do whatever he wants with us. I think it speaks to a slavery aspect of the allegiant. Right? We're supposed to essentially surrender ourselves to a God holy, which essentially makes us slaves or servants of God. In fact, Christianity is loaded with that type of language, servanthood. I also see it reminiscent of the domestic abuser model, which is uh, God gives us our value. He gives us our worth and identity. We are nothing without him. You had better not ever leave me or I will hurt you. If you are harmed, it is for your own benefit. This is uh, the language of an abuser. And to see people who respond so positively to this idea that we know God can swallow us in tsunamis and he can uh, ravage us with uh, leprosy and leukemia and all manner of malady and, and horribleness. And it's okay because he's God, it's his sandbox. We're ants in the anthill kind of thing. Yep. It's uh, an alarming surrender of our own moral compass. And uh, I, I think it's also a get out of thinking free card. And I sense a little bit of that in his uh, phone call.